So thank you so, so much for taking the time to chat to us. Doom Patrol season two, we're very excited. We're very excited. This uh, very unique, very strange, very weird DC Comics uh, adaptation is is going down a storm. Uh, have you have you gone over the fact that you're not just back for season two, but that the fans, because they're so demanding of their comic book characters and so demanding of their comic book stories that they're taken to this in such a great way? Yes, uh, I'm so excited and I'm so honored to be able to be a part of it. Um, and I love that Doom Patrol has never been done before. So it's it's kind of uh, the the beginning. And with that, based on the comic books, I think we're doing a really good job. Yeah, I mean, it's it's a very, I mean, comic book, particularly in movies over the last few years, particularly DC has have gone very dark with their heroes. You know, it's right. very serious and very much about real world and all that kind of stuff and I just it's so refreshing to see something that's so different I was just wondering when you first read the scripts and you heard sort of it was a comic book move comic book tv show and everything that you you thought oh I don't know if I want to do that but when, when you read it you must have been so surprised at just how different it was yeah it it was such a treat because our show is such a psychedelic strange out there like uh, bright colored shroomy show that um <laughs> And we're lucky enough that our characters are are dark and we deal with the human condition, but there's like this um, comedy. There's this little snarky leg think, uh, behind it, uh, which you'll see in all the episodes. There's always like moments of relief and laughter. So I think that's a nice addition to DC's universe. Yeah, I mean, the t I, I love a lot of the TV shows. The TV shows are very, very strong. You know, you've got The Flash and Supergirl and all you guys are kind of of the same universe, which for fans is so, for me, again, many, many fans, so exciting that you guys are all connected because we've never had that before. I mean, that yeah. must have been a great feeling to know that you were all together. And then you obviously had the, the crisis on Infinite Earths recently, which went down an absolute storm with everybody. That must be so yeah. great to know that not only do you have such a great family, but that you're part of this massive extended family now. It's incredible. It's, it's, it's like unlike anything else there is. That's what, it's such a special universe to live in. Yeah. And when, going back to the beginning, I mean, when you first got the scripts, what was it about Rita and, and that, that her story? Because it's a very, you know, everyone is such a unique character, but they are so wonderfully fleshed out during the show. And now in season two, you get to explore that even more. I just wondered what it was about her and her story and her journey that kind of spoke to you when you first read it and thought, this is someone I would, I would really like to play. Oh, cause she's so fabulous. She's so damaged. Uh, and she has uh, kind of calcified in this um, state of self-loathing with this beautiful uh, exterior. Um, and I, I think that's a really cool challenge to play. And um, that she, she's kind of, her behavior in the beginning is very ugly and she's just this glamorous person. I think, I think that's what's so fun is the contrast between like how she presents herself to the world and how she is inside, um, you know, and she's just a very wounded, damaged person inside. Um, she pretends that it comes off in this confidence and this, um, you know, uh, punishment to other people which shows how much she's punishing herself which I think is really cool and I guess as you're part of the DC kind of canon you get to or at least I would hope that you get to access a little bit of the the archives and get to see some of the old comics and go through kind of the history I mean that must that itself is an exciting thing I can imagine it was for all you guys that you got to see things and discover things yeah. that you might not have even seen beforehand yeah, exactly. Like uh, the, the the Paris painting, the painting of Who Ate Paris, like that was insane that we read the comic book and we're like, what, where's the story going to go in the first season? Because we hadn't gotten like any scripts or anything. And then you get like episode four and you're reading, and you're like, oh, it's the Paris eating the painting. Like it's, it's, it's very, um, very exciting. It's like a grab bag goodie. You just don't know what the writers are going to right if it's going to be like an independent idea or if it's going to go with um the the flow of the grant morrison comics which is most of what we do yeah and you're amongst these guys who have so many amazing powers but they also have lots of makeup and have to go through all that stuff whereas your stuff i guess is very physical but also you have to kind of be a bit imaginative given that a lot of yours would be done post what you've done you know with the elastic stuff and everything else i mean how was that experience for you dealing with all of that stuff when 
you know you have to deal with that stuff where say Joven Wade has the makeup and everyone else has the makeup how did you how did you did you enjoy or did you did you take a little bit of getting used to what that would entail right I I loved it one because <laughs> all the boys face have to be covered and so they have like prosthetics and they have to like and they can't you know like move freely and someone has to take their face off for them when we're we're not shooting so I enjoyed very much not having that I was like oh good I just like I'm I go into the makeup trailer which is an incredible experience because they transform me like Rita wears a wig she does this beautiful makeup and then I have these incredible clothes that inform my character so that is my process, like getting Rita together. And then I, I inform it with the physicality, um, you know, when she blobs out, uh, that takes a lot of imagination, but we live in a world of imagination. So, so it's, it's kind of, um, it's fun, I think, actually. I like my imagination. <laughs> <laughs> and I guess obviously you're part of this world now where you you're really excited to get the part I can imagine you're really excited to get the part in the beginning but also you're with a culture now where you can't really say anything <laughs> you know how have you how have you kind of dealt with spoiler culture because it is that kind of a premature with these things you know you can't say anything you know even though you want to talk about how how you amazing you the show's going to be and how fans are going to are going to take to it you know but you can't talk about it I mean has that been a has that been a kind of a strange scenario to be in that you, you want to talk about it but also you're like no I can't really say especially with a season two now coming out yeah, it's, it is strange to me because I feel like there's only so, like I want to be specific and I want to share the experience and then you you kind of have to like cloud it in this thing of like, hey, um, it, you know, just watch and find out. It's, it's going to be great. It's a wild ride. But I can tell you that it, with the um, introduction of Dorothy Spinner, Doom Patrol is more Doom Patrol than it's ever been. So if you enjoyed season one, I feel like we go deeper and there's this glue that Dorothy Spinner adds to um, the the unit of Doom Patrol, which wasn't there before. So it adds like this incredible magic. So um, that's what I'm saying. <laughs> <laughs> and this, I mean, as with a lot of TV shows, fantastic ensemble you guys have. Obviously you have you guys and and everything else. Then you add Brenda Frazier, obviously Timothy Dalton, who was James Bond. Uh, and you guys seem to be such a great family, particularly on screen. But I, I, I would hope as a fan that you're the same off screen. Have you been, you must feel so lucky to be part of a group that gets on both off screen and off screen, because it really comes across on the screen that you guys are like a family. Yeah, thank you. Thank you for, for saying that. Yeah, because I feel, you know, these are the people that you spend 16 hour days with. So they, they do become your family. And um, luckily we're all very um, similar in the fact that we want to do the best job that we can. And uh, we love our jobs. So it's, it's the greatest <laughs> experience actually. Like now that we're home and we've finished season two, it's, it's like, you know, being, calling the person up and be like, did we just, we just did that, right? Like, did we, did we, we went, okay, okay, good. You don't want to be alone in it. Um, so it's nice to have that camaraderie. Um, and it's, it's, it's a joy to work with such talented, incredible people. And I think that shows in our show. Like, so. Yeah, and I guess obviously you've done a lot of TV as well. I've seen you on shows before, but this is obviously a very, very, very different beast. I mean, did that take a, a bit of adjusting to, given that the TV, TV in particular now is obviously there's a lot more money and there's a lot more talent going to TV. But when you do the superhero stuff, there's a lot more to it than say doing a sitcom or doing maybe a, a drama or something. I mean, did that take a bit of adjusting to judging, jumping from one world to another? Because I can imagine it's such a big, vast beast of a machine, the, the kind of superhero uh, genre, if you like. Yeah, that's the perfect description. It, it, it takes so much care and, um, you know, LJ, LJ is our, our costume, like she is the super suits designer. And I remember um, when I did um, the episode for Titans, it was uh, last a woman's first introduction. And I had so many fittings for her Doom Patrol um, superhero outfit and it was it was incredible because it just became very long hours but the hours were 
fully artistic. It became like, let's listen to music. Let's get this right. Like they really give us time to, to serve what it is we're there to do, to, to, to fully imagine the world. Um, and it, it shows in our sets, it shows in the lighting and the makeup and the costumes. Uh, and, and I, I feel very honored. It is, it is like being a superhero. You're like, what is this magical place, you know? Yeah, and I think that the, a, a nice thing about superheroes now, I mean, in the old days, you used to have Superman and Batman in, in the movies. You didn't really get much else. But now we get all of these amazing characters that cross ethnicities, that cross, uh, you know, there's male characters and female characters, obviously Supergirl as well, Batwoman's now being a thing. I mean, it must be great to be part of a, a company that now is embracing every single facet of, of real life. You know, obviously in Supergirl, there's, there's an LGBTQ character and everything else. I mean, that must be great knowing that you're embracing the characters, but also embracing real life, embracing these characters, these people and everything else and telling their stories. It must be great to be a part of, of something like that. Yeah, it's, it's incredible. It, it feels like really good work. Like when I go home, I feel like I, I really like, the time spent and the energy taken to connect and to tell these stories of these wounded people who are dealing with, you know, things that we can all relate to. Um, it's, it's, it's an honor to do that. And it's just, it's just getting bigger, bigger now, isn't it? This whole kind of extended universe. Cause I, I I've read that Batman is going to be at some point slowly introduced. And then obviously the crisis of infinite earths is introduced to kind of the justice league in a way that, you know, obviously fans are a bit bit burnt from the movie and everything else, but this is kind of a classic Justice League movie. I mean, I guess the sky's the limit for you guys as well at Doom Patrol, that hopefully you guys can kind of grow on what you're doing and go for, for many more seasons. I mean, are you hopeful that you get to, to stay with this character for a little while longer? Yeah, I, think, I feel like there's so much more to discover because when you see season two, you'll see like it's it's we are just beginning to find the rhythm. Uh, and I think it just adds so much. Um, it's like a fine wine. You need time for it to breathe. And season two, we give it that time. I feel like season one was introduction. And you're like, what is this show? There's so, so much happening in these characters. What? And I feel like season two, you really get the time to fall in love with the characters and relate to their struggles. And then hopefully season three, season four, there will be like a, a completely new unification of, of the stories. Yeah. And hopefully, I mean, hopefully you get to do more seasons. But do you, do you think, I mean, I, I presume this is true of most of the characters that you've played, but do you think there'll always be a part of Rita that you'll, you'll carry with you? And will, will you, is she someone you will really miss whenever the time comes, whether it's in a year, 10 years or whatever, that you'll, you'll miss playing her, but a part of you will, will always kind of keep a part of her going? Yes, I love Rita so much. I feel like playing Rita has helped me. Like, almost, she's, I feel like Rita's a very strong woman, actually. And I feel like she's helped me become a stronger woman. And um, because, you know, as flawed as she is, she makes me know, like, you know exactly what Rita is thinking. Um, and she's not afraid to say no. She's like, I don't want to. <laughs> <laughs> and I love that about her. So I, I hope that keeps in me for all times. Um, but uh, I, I do, I am excited to see how she's going to develop and grow and, and you know, yeah. <laughs> have they ever given you any, any indication yet that you that a season three? Because a lot of these shows have gone for a, quite a few number of years now. They're giving you an indication of that or are you kind of on tent hooks? They're so secretive. Like, <laughs> no at all other than like, how much we enjoy the show and you know like and, and it's an incredible every time i watch it i'm like oh this is so great right and everyone's like yeah it's so great and so <laughs> <laughs> well fingers crossed you get to come back for for many more seasons and uh, I'm, I'm sure there's a lot more to to do with these characters because all the other characters do so as well so so yeah. yeah so thank you so much for your time absolute pleasure chatting to you and uh, and best of luck with it all love the show thank you so much Thank you, you too. Cheers, well. take care. Ladies and gentlemen, you're watching Hey You Guys. Hey You Guys, huh? Hey you guys, is yeah. that from the Goonies? It is indeed, yeah. Nice. Hey You Guys.